I'm so happy to get to talk a little bit today about a teacher who has greatly influenced my life. I met her right here in my home, and she found me to be a bit of a surprise. I came along in her life when she was 49 years old. I am her daughter, and the teacher I'm talking about is Rosemary Gladio. I've missed her for the last 30 some years. We lost her to cancer when I was 19, but her lessons live on in my heart and mind, and it is a joy for me to get to share some of those with others. She was a writer, and she was a homemaker, and one of the things I learned from her was that every rejection can be a lesson. In fact, today, as a writer myself, I sit here next to filing cabinet, still filled with some of her proudest rejection letters and her most exciting acceptance letters. As a freelance writer, she really taught me through example how important persistence is when you have an idea that you want to get out into the world. You don't try just one medium and you don't try to tell just one person. You decide what your values are, and then you share them at every opportunity you get. So Rosemary Gladio's writing eventually started to pay for some family trips. And I fondly remember heading to Florida in the family station wagon one year. We would go for six or seven days once a year, and that was the big Gladio family trip. And I remember her turning around to let us kids know that she paid for this trip with her writing money, and this wasn't something that dad's job as an electrical engineer was going to be funding. She was also adamant about sticking with her own identity and having her own interests. And this is a woman who was born in 1924, so she was a bit of, maybe ahead of her time with some of her desire for independence and the ways that she made sure she achieved it. In car trips with friends, another strong memory is we would have my mom taking us to basketball practice or something, and I recall her turning around in the car and letting some of my friends know that they could be anything they wanted to be as long as they were willing to work hard for it, to which she often received, Mom, glad, turn back around, watch the road. But she was very intent on coaching others to be the best they could be and to believe in their own potential. And I've made a living as an executive coach, instructional designer, trainer, adjunct professor, and writer, clearly continuing her mission on this planet. I learned from her that we really are on the planet for a very short time, and anything we can do to lift others up is time well spent. She came into my grade school, a parochial grade school that didn't uh, at the time invest in much art or language instruction and she wrote my teacher a note and said you deserve a break if you would like I would like to go rent some pictures or take some pictures from the library and bring them in to show them to your students and talk about Van Gogh and Da Vinci and let these little ones know about art and you can go get a cup of coffee in the faculty room, give me 20 or 30 minutes with the kids. And she did that with, with Spanish, conversational Spanish as well. So it was a little embarrassing, I'll admit, to be the kid whose mom was coming in to the classroom, but we'd have, you know, 20 or 25 very excited kids. Is your mom coming today? Is your mom coming today? Well, we learned some Spanish today. And I would roll my eyes and think, mom is coming in today. Now, of course, as an adult, I look back and realize what a giving heart she had and what courage she showed to be able to stick her neck out like that and try to provide instruction where perhaps there wasn't any. So I want to thank my mom. Thank you, Mom Glad. Thank you, Rosemary Gladio, for all the ways you invested in me and for just being the kind of parent who sacrificed for your children, we all turned out okay, and we're all trying to live 
in your shadow and give back every day.